What's up guys, this is part three, and in this part I'm gonna be focusing more on the individual Pokemon themselves, help you make some decisions on maybe if you have multiple of them, which one to use, or if you don't have one at all, what you should use instead, or what you can use instead. I won't say what you should use, a lot of this stuff is uh, subjective and untested. So um, I'm just gonna go through PV Poke really quick, just to see some of the potential alternatives uh, for Shadow Victory Bell. We'll go over Shadow Victory Bell first. Uh, if you look at Tropius, obviously one of the premier Razor Reliefers in the game, but it doesn't have the firepower that Shadow Victory Bell does. Um, so it's it's hard to use it to force switch advantage. So Shadow Victory Bell, obviously the advantage of the Shadow Victory Bell, high damage, and the poison subtyping makes it resistant to both charmers and fighters, which can otherwise like take you down regardless of shields as well. Uh... And unfortunately, there's no other Grass Poison Shadow with uh, access to Leaf Blade. And Leaf Blade is probably the best charge move in the game. So it's kind of hard to think about something that completely is better than Shadow Picture Bell at its uh, current niche. Uh, some people recommend Shadow Weeping Bell, but you need a Elite Fast Move TM to give it Razor Leaf. And it has slightly higher attack. It's also slightly squishier, so it'll lose matchups like Galarian Stunfisk, which is extremely important. And it also doesn't have access to Leaf Blade, it has access to Seed Bomb instead. So people don't really need to shield uh, the charge move when they come in. Uh, what I would suggest for an alternative, if you don't have Shadow Victory Bell, uh, if you can't go out and get some, uh, some decoy grunts, I would recommend a Shadow Blossom. has access to Leaf Blade as well. Uh, don't use Bullet Seed, use Razor Leaf. You lose the poison subtype, but you, with losing the poison subtype, you also lose the weakness to confusion users like Hypno. So you can actually stay in against Hypno and you can probably take Hypno down. Um, the other two recommendations I can make are Grottle, Shadow Grottle, uh, has Razor Leaf as well, but instead of Leaf Blade, it has Body Slam, so it has a better neutral coverage. Uh, and Body Slam is still a very good fast move. It's much better than something like Seed Bomb. So that's a pretty uh, spicy option. Or honestly, I think this is pretty underused is where Shadow Torterra. Uh, I wouldn't use Stone Edge. I would use Sand Tomb. But the big thing about Shadow Torterra is the ground subtyping gives it resistance to both of Galarian Stunfisk's moves. And if that Pokemon becomes as popular as I think it's about to become after the Registeel nerfs, uh, Shadow Torterra will definitely have a place in the meta. Uh, some thoughts about Shadow Gloom and Shadow Vile Plume. Uh, like on paper, look, it's rated above Shadow Victory Bell, but what PB Pokey never takes into account is what you bring into the next matchup. Victory Bell is going to bring into the next matchup a Leaf Blade, and they're going to have to shield. Shadow Gloom isn't going to bring a charge move in the next matchup because it's probably going to die before it even gets to one. And if it does get to a Moon Blast, it doesn't matter that you have the coverage. It's going to be shielded anyways uh some spice that if you can find a way to swap bastion out for something that's not weak to fighting i honestly think uh shadow shiftery has some play with razor leaf and leaf blade and foul play and shadow obama snow could have some play with razor leaf and weather ball ice which it just got um, but the problem is both of those are weak to fighting and bastion's also weak to fighting so if they have a fighter lead which is not uncommon uh you're kind of in a tough spot you probably lost that that game so it, that would take a, a bit more team building uh but I, i'll definitely look into it in the future i, I want to experiment with a couple of those pokemon i think that they definitely have some they, they have some play for sure um but yeah let's get on to some of the the matchups i think here we're going to start with a uh we're going to focus a lot on shadow victory bell here because uh, the lead matchups are the most important they're the ones that are always starting at, at full health and we're going to start off with a mirror so this is a little bit of uh, what to do and what not to do. Uh, generally, I like to not throw any energy at all. That guarantees you the mirror win uh, as long as you have defensive IVs. If you have offensive IVs, then there's no guarantee. But I have fast move lag. So because of the fast move lag, I don't think I can guarantee the win anymore. I'd rather take a shield off of him, but he doesn't even shield. So this is what I think is very important. You have to keep your Victory Bell alive as long as you can in the mirror. Because otherwise what happens is the next Pokemon comes in and you get a Leaf Blade off and force the shield anyways and deal a ton of damage just with your fast moves alone. So 
Now, if you if we go back and just look at the end scenario there, tie in Pokemon, tie in Shields, and Deoxys Defense is down half of its health. And it's, it's pretty hard to come back from that. And you have Switch Advantage. Uh, so I'll be going through the rest of these matchups in kind of in order of easiest or best to worst. Uh, in the first case, we have uh, matchups where you only need to spend one shield and the enemy Pokemon uh, will just go down and you'll exit the matchup with a ton of energy. So in this case, this includes Gengar, Haunter, uh, Azumarill, um, I'm blanking on some right now, but... Uh, You'll feel them, those are the most common ones, and you'll feel them out, and as you can see, this is extremely favorable, you maintain switch advantage, you do a ton of damage to their switch in, and actually in this case, burn two shields, so, uh, at this point, because they stayed in, oh yeah, Sableye as well, a lot of the ghosts actually have, uh, have very similar, uh, ways they play, uh, so in this case, this is Shadow Victory Bell versus Galarian Stunfisk, uh, this one is actually a unique scenario. So I wanted to focus on it specifically because I think this will happen a lot in the future. And this is what exactly a showcase of why you need defensive IVs. So you can tank one rock slide, um, and I would use the leaf blade to force a shield back. And obviously you can't tank the second rock slide, but these mud shots aren't resisted because you're part poison and they chunk you down. If your shadow victory bell is not defense weighted or if you just choose an attack weighted one you can't do that you can't go one for one shield with glaring stun fisk in the lead uh so next we have leads where you, they can force two shields but you can force one shield back so you'll exit this with a two or a, a one to zero shield deficit uh so they're not favorable leads uh one of them is deoxys with psycho boost as you can see uh, I found it's IV dependent. You might be able to tank the second Psycho Boost. But it's not worth the risk, I don't think. Uh, so in this case, what you can see is even though you had to spend two shields, you still have so much health and so much power that the next Pokemon comes in, you can still faint it. Kind of deal. It's all about momentum with this team. Um, in this next scenario, this is uh, also a pretty unique scenario. Uh, Registeel. So with Registeel... You can win this lead by throwing shields at it. And I would honestly recommend that you do. Um, this used to be IV dependent or lag dependent. And I was having a lot of fast move lag doing my sets. Just like right there, uh, I lost a turn. And with the new update, with the nerf to flash cannon, this is no longer IV dependent. As long as you hit one leaf blade on them, you can take them down. So look, now we're at a two shield disadvantage. Uh, but you can leverage that two shield disadvantage into a win with switch advantage a lot of the time. Umbreon is also a unique scenario. This is another case where you kind of want a defense weighted uh, Shadow Victory Bell. You can survive one foul play. If they're running Dark Pulse, uh, you're actually in a lot of trouble, but nobody really runs Dark Pulse at the higher ranks, so just be careful about how many Snarls they use if you're at a lower rank. But at the same time, you get low, and you have to spend a shield. Uh, the reason you want a defense-weighted Shadow Victory Bell is if they spend two shields, you can still force the win. Or if you, they force you to use two shields, you can still force the win. Uh, so in this case, this is obviously an unwinnable lead. So we're actually focusing more on Deoxys Defense now and his matchups. And so the key with Deoxys Defense, uh, Meganium, Stunfisk, they're all winnable matchups. They're not good. But... What you want to do is you want to be charging up as much as you can before you use the first Psycho Boost. Uh, right there, I throw a Psycho Boost because I don't want to get second Frenzy Planet. I don't want to show that I am willing to shield here. So I throw another counter, another Psycho Boost, same old story. And at this point, I'm super debuffed and he's trying to farm me down, but I'm just going to keep throwing Psycho Boosts. Um, you can't get debuffed past two Psycho Boosts, so like four attack drops. Uh, so I'm already max debuffed, so there's no reason to, to be banking energy for more Psycho Boosts. You just keep throwing them. Um, and at this point, I've grabbed two shields because he's trying to farm me down. Um, at this point, he also realizes he can't farm me down, so he finally throws Frenzy Plant Energy, and I've tapped Psycho Boost. I lose the CMP tie, but 
Either way, his Meganium goes down with energy. And the main part here is I've got Switch Advantage back. And I'm going to be able to lock my Bastiodon into that Altaria. So another awful matchup that you should switch out of Shadow Victory Bell is any Confusion user. Anything that can beat you down before you can beat it down. Um, and I wanted to showcase Azumarill because I think it is the most common switch in to Deoxys Defense. And it's it's a very winnable matchup, assuming or depending on how much energy you have and how much health the other Pokemon has taken off of you. So in this case, this is just one scenario. Uh, I believe... The Azumarill wants to double sh or double shields Thunderbolts, so I'll just match shields and try and uh, try and beat him. Uh, the key with Deoxys Defense, I, I use a very specific kind of recipe for Deoxys Defense versus Azumarill. Um, I throw Thunderbolts until the first one that doesn't get shielded. Uh, so that won't really be shown in this case because he already has no shields, but. Uh, you can see you outpace with Psycho Boost to the next charge move. Otherwise, Azumarill probably could have gotten to an Ice Beam and KO'd my Deoxys Defense. That's why we use Psycho Boost over Rock Slide. So in this case, this is another scenario where I'm locked in versus an Azumarill with uh, no prior stuff. I throw Thunderbolt, and a lot of the times they don't block the first one, which is fine. I have some fast move delay, uh, which actually really hurts in this matchup because you need every single counter, every single piece of energy you can get um the fast move delay what happens is these azumarils uh oh they almost never they almost always shield the second thunderbolt so now i'm low and i'm going to psycho boost bait so what this does is it hedges my bets a little bit um i psycho boost bait and then i have enough to throw a thunderbolt and after the defense drop psycho boost and thunderbolt deal about the same amount of damage um and you can see we're both about the same health, but because I missed a fast move earlier, I actually do have to switch in the Bastion on there. But normally, um, what you can do is you just Psycho Boost the first one. If they shield it, you throw a Thunderbolt, and the Azumarill will almost never shield the second one because they're not going to shield a, a debuff move. Um, so that's the specific matchups for Deoxys Defense that I, I find are really important. Um, as far as potential, potential uh, safe switches... Oops. For uh, Deoxys Defense, things that I've been considering, Mew, I think, works okay. You just need stuff that can chase out a flyer and has pretty hard-to-guess moveset. Um, I think that, honestly, the best alternative for Deoxys Defense is either Shadow Hypno or Hypno. And I think you need to run Fire Punch on either of them. Uh... But with the Galarian Stunfisk being introduced to the game, that's kind of uh, throwing a wrench in those plans. Uh, because uh, it's very hard for Shadow Hypno or Hypno to beat Galarian Stunfisk. I haven't actually ran any of the Sims or, or played uh, the matchups, but I can imagine it being very hard. Um, as well, I honestly think Galarian Stunfisk is a very good safe switch. I'm going to be testing this out in the next couple days here. Um hopefully on stream and kind of testing out glaring stump as a safe swap kind of drawing out as well the bastion on counter and it's also a pokemon that does really well with a little bit of an energy advantage so when you swap it into that altaria if you get a couple mud shots off before they switch uh, i feel like you can take down a lot of pokemon that you didn't really expect um to be able to take down and even honestly electivire and shadow electivire i've been thinking about that recently too uh, they charge fast enough. They have Ice Punch to, to try and get the Altari out. They have uh, Electric Moves to try and get the Skarmory out. Skarmory out. They just have a very good matchup versus uh, the Flyers in general, which is what you'll normally be uh, s swapping into. And, and they're less known, so people won't know the exact matchups. Um, but I think those could uh, they could definitely be good options for sure. Um, and as far as Bastiodon goes, I'm not going to show any specific matchups with Bastiodon. Yeah, there's stomps his matchups where he doesn't. There's nothing you specifically have to do. You're not baiting with any moves. His charge moves cost the same amount of energy. Uh, the important thing is that you want to have switch advantage for him to try and get him into that positive matchup. And as for uh, replacements for Bastiodon, uh, I've heard people working it okay with uh, Probopass, with um, Agron even, um, although I wouldn't recommend either. And honestly, I think the best replacement for him would be Galarian Stunfisk. 
Uh, another trainer, Pokemon Trainer Cray, has been using this. He used to be using my exact team, uh, but recently when I played him, I expected the mirror matchup, and out came Glaren Stumpfisk at the end, and he's doing okay in, on the leaderboards too, so it, it can't be going that poorly. Uh, my only worry is that Glaren Stumpfisk is very reliant on charge move damage as opposed to fast move damage, uh, so you can't really power through a shield disadvantage as easily, but... But at, at the same time, the typing and stats and, and move set for this Pokemon are, are just amazing. It checks exactly the Pokemon that you would want to check uh, in the first place with Bastiodon. So I, I do think he's a good check, and I'll be trying him in both the safe switch and both and the uh, the closer position. But yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as IVs go for Bastiodon and Deoxys Defense, it doesn't really matter. Like, they're... Uh, they're both Pokemon where you need at least 10 in each IV because Deoxys Defense is a mythical, you can't trade him, and uh, Bastion needs to be maxed pretty much, so you need high IVs to hit that hit that level. So regardless, your IVs don't really matter. Shadow Victory Bell, I've said before, you probably want high stat products, I would say. Um, there's been a lot of misinformation paired it around. Not misinformation, but... Uh, where you hit an Acid Spray Breakpoint on Registeel with an attack-weighted Shadow Victory Bell. But you're just better off throwing Leaf Blade and winning the matchup anyways. You use less energy, and they don't have to shield the Acid Spray either. So it just seems like it's a worse overall scenario, and you're sacrificing a lot of bulk and access the Sludge Bomb if you want to use it, just so you can... Uh, like, guarantee the Registeel win through shields, which you can kind of do by just throwing Leaf Blade late anyways. Um, but yeah, that's the end of part three. Uh, let me know if you liked the gameplay or the more of the educational stuff better. Uh, I don't really know what people like. I like doing both of these things. But uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments if you prefer the gameplay or the uh, part one, two, or three. And I can kind of tailor my future content towards that. Thanks, guys.